Come on, girls. You know you're not supposed to be over here. Go on, May. Go on. You know better. You know better. Hey guys, this is Tim at Van Leeuwen Family Farm. I've got a feeling that this calf is out of Dad's Red Angus bull. Even though it's black, it just looks a little bit different than all of our other calves. See how uh, fuzzy its tail, fluffy its tail is? Might be kind of hard to see. Uh, none of our other calves had a fluffy tail like that. And uh, those Red Angus bulls, uh, mine and dad's, have a little bit more of a fluffy tail on them. And see how tight her sheath is. Every other, yeah, every other calf that we've had out of that, uh, you know, ultra black bull, which has got, he's he had some brangus in him. They all had a lot longer sheath than this calf does. This calf is just two days old. My video skills aren't very aren't very good today. Yeah, this calf is just two days old and uh you know, both mama and calf are doing good. I just got a good feeling that this calf is out of that Red Angus bull. Uh, my dad told me that he had talked to Mushrush back when he got his bull, and they said that normally that first cross uh, between the Red Angus bull and a black cow will produce a black calf. And then if you can save that heifer and cross her again, then you'll start getting some red calves. And this is, this does look like a heifer calf. You know, if, uh, if she gets older and we still can't tell which bull she was out of, uh, they make a DNA test out there that will actually, you know, if there's a bull on file, they can parentage DNA test her and find out if she was in fact out of that red Angus bull. And it's cheap. Uh, they can do like the parentage verification test. And they can also give you uh, like 16 different traits. Even though this heifer will be a commercial heifer. Hey girls. Even though this heifer will be a commercial heifer. Uh, they can give you what they consider their traits are. It won't be... EPDs to any specific breed <clears throat> but it will be uh, the traits that they come up with according to their test their certain tests and and standards uh, and that test is called uh, now my mind's going blank all of a sudden it's by Neogen I think it's called Entogy and uh, it's only like $29 and there's a few different ways to, to take that test. I think, uh, you know, I'm going to have to actually call them and talk to them to see um, what, what all different test methods you can use. But the one I would probably do is an uh, actual tissue sample. And it looks like an ear tagger with a little cartridge. Wrong cow. And you just... Uh, you know punch a little small tiny tissue sample out of their ear and you send that in and what I'm gonna do is get the parentage verification so I know which bull she's out of and I want to get those traits on her even though 
if she's out of that red angus bull i'm keeping her either way but you know since i'm doing the parentage verification it'd be nice to have those traits just for my knowledge she's a good looking calf though and i'm probably gonna you know if I can't tell which calves are which uh, next year, I may be sending in quite a few samples because we've got a Red Angus bull. Uh, we bought our Red Angus bull after Dad did. And so we got a Red Angus bull and then we have a black, uh, what I would call uh, black balancer bull He's probably got more Angus than Gelvy in him. He but he does have a, a little bit of Gelvy in him And he's got quite a bit of Angus in him at this point and he's he does have a touch of Brangus So his granddaddy was Brangus And his grandmother was a balancer which is a cross between angus and gelvy the brangus is a cross between angus and brahma or brahma however you want to say it uh, the brangus is five eighths angus and three eighths brahmin and uh, a balancer cow or bull can really be any range of 25% to 75% Angus or Gil Gilvy, either way. Uh, his grandmother, though, was probably, I think she was about 50 50. From what I remember. But he's. Uh, that other black bull we have, he's, he's definitely more Angus than uh, Brangus or Gelvy. So it may be, and, and if, if what Mushrush said was wow. right, it may be hard to tell the difference between those calves if most of the first crosses come out black and then obviously our black bull, his calves are gonna come out black. So most of the calves out of our first calf heifers, uh, we're not going to be keeping any of those for heifers because um, we don't really want to keep any heifers out of first calf heifers. They just don't grow as big. Uh, this cow was actually out of a first calf heifer and she turned out to be a good cow, but if I had my choice, I'd just wait until they at least had their second calves. But so all the all the calves out of the first calf heifers we're not going to keep anyways for females. But it would just be nice to know there are a few cows out here that if they do have uh, calves out of that red Angus calf we probably will keep uh, some of their heifers because they'll be on their second calves and. A cow like this this is her second calf uh, you know if this is out of that red angus bull we'll keep her next year if she has a red angus calf uh, it'll be her third calf we'll probably keep it you know that type of deal so anything any cow past their first calf if they have a heifer we'll probably consider keeping them And when I do do that DNA test, uh, I'm going to document all that for you guys because I'm super interested in it. I've always been super intrigued by genetics. And the fact that they can uh, 
run a DNA test on a commercial animal, a commercial cow or calf, and not only give you the, the parent of that calf if it was registered, but also uh, their traits, you know, almost like a commercial set of VPDs. Some of those include uh, birth weight, calving ease, uh, maternal traits like milking ability, um, udder scores even, and they'll have carcass traits. See how long his sheath is down there by down there by his belly. And that's how most of our calves look. This is a little bit tighter, but almost all of them when they're first born, they hang down pretty far. As they get a little bit older, they'll start to tighten up a little bit. But they'll also have, anyways, they'll also have your carcass traits, your marbling, uh, ribeye area, carcass weight, I think. You know, but there's like 16 different traits. I can't remember all of them right now, but those are some of the main ones. But I'll document all that. I'm probably going to get that, uh, you know, ear tag looking tool and send in a tissue sample. And I'll show you guys how to do that, and I'll show you guys the results when I get them back. I don't know how soon I'm going to do that. You know, I might wait till she's a little bit older. Or maybe I'll do it uh, when, I, when I put an ear tag in her ear, just do it at the same time. But anyways... That's what's going on today. This calf is two days old. I wanted to come out and check on it. I've been super excited to see this calf because I've been hoping that she's out of that red Angus bull that uh, that we had out here for about a month. We had him out here for about a month. Uh, Dad had COVID at the time, and so we took delivery of him on our place. And uh, after Dad got all healed up and everything and was ready to take him, we, we pulled him down to my dad's house a couple hours away from here so it just so happened that this heifer got bred around the time that that bull was here would have been right after that bull showed up either way she would have got bred because we had our bull out here too she didn't like that but uh, if yeah, if she had a calf out of that red Angus, we're definitely gonna keep her. I turned that hot wire off so I could go back and forth real easily when I was checking on this calf. And these two older calves, they just must have walked right through it. So I'm gonna try to get them back in, see if they'll go ahead and crawl back under because I'm about to turn this hot wire back on. Let me go over here where it's got a little more slack in it. I'm about to turn this hot wire back on and I don't want them on this side and get shocked and not want to go back over. These are our two older calves. They're both heifers. This red one we call May. The, the black one is June bug. Come on, girls. You know you're not supposed to be over here. Go on, May. Go on. You know better. You know better. Go on now. For whatever reason, these calves, they, 
they don't seem to get shocked as hard as the the bigger cows they must not have as much of a contact with the ground sometimes i can pull one of these out and kind of coax them over these calves are bad about getting out on my other hot wires i only have one wire Can't get that out. Couldn't get that out, so I just propped the wire up. So they'll go through. Go on. Go on, calves. Go on, girls. Go on, girls. This red calf is out of a first calf heifer. Boy, she's grown really good for being out of a first calf heifer. Go on. You got to take it slow with these calves. Now you should have no reason to go, not to go through there. Go on. Go on, May. Go on. Go on. Go on, girl. Go on, girl. <laughs> this May is pretty honoring. And so is June Bug. June Bug, these two. They both love to get out. They just know. They know when and where they can get out. If they can get away with it. Go on. There, there went June Bug. Go on, May. Go with her. Go with her. Go with her. Go on. There you go. She's thinking about it. Give her a little nudge. There she goes. All right. Now that that's out of the way, we can move these back down. Go turn the hot wire back on and we should be good. All right, guys, have a good day. This is Tim at Van Leeuwen Family Farm.